Anyway, any other questions? Who's next? The doctor is in. Hey, hey, Alex, it's Mike, hey, Mike. Tams. Not really a question, but could you go over objections? I mean, I've I've heard you a few times, but there's always more objections to come. So <laughs> run through the gamut with us. <laughs> yeah, objection handling. Um, man, objections are fun. I always look at for objections. You know, we always say that objections are um, a signal of interest. And the best thing that I try to do, um, first of all, the good news is when someone gives me an objection, they're still on the phone. You know, they haven't hung up yet. Okay. So that's a positive. That's a positive um, that they haven't hung up the phone. So I look at it in a very positive way in that regard. Okay. So the other thing I think about is I have to think about what am I trying to do with handling objections? And mentally, my whole idea is how can I keep them on the phone longer, right? How can I keep them talking? If I can keep them talking and answering my questions, I'm in total control. And the longer I can keep them talking, the higher chance I have of booking an appointment to sit down with them, right? And I'm looking to turn an old lead or whatever lead into, into an A lead, into an appointment. So um, you know, the top objections, the, the only really, there are only like maybe three objections that you ever run into more than anything else. And I know I get this all the time for people that have these totally obscure objections, you know, and it's like, man, I, I've never gotten that one, but I can make up something, you know, but, um, but, and the other thing too, just I have to, say this is that um you know when you start getting into the mode it's amazing how you don't run into many objections anymore you know uh, any top producer will tell you that you ask them well, how do you handle these five different objections and they're like thinking hmm. honestly I, I don't know the last time i got that objection <laughs> you know it's a kind of a weird thing but the people that are in high production mode they don't really get it because they talk through it what I mean by that, how they talk through it, they they acknowledge that they someone said something, but they ignore it and they go to book the appointment. Like it's crazy. So um, I haven't taught this technique in a while, but it's like it is the it's um, acknowledge, um, ignore and move on, aim. And so it's really crazy. But you can be talking to someone, and they'll say, "Oh, I'll." Yeah, I remember saying it, but I'm not interested anymore. Oh, you're not interested anymore? Yeah, yeah, I always repeat what they say. Well, listen, my job really is just to get this information to you. It only takes about 15, 20 minutes. They have me coming out, you know, Wednesday or tomorrow. What's Friday? Tomorrow between 5 and 7 p.m. in your area or Saturday morning between, you know, 11 and noon. Like, which day is better for you? Well, I'll tell you, we're not interested. Yeah, I know. I've got, that's why I'm calling. You know, this is only takes about 15, 20 minutes. My job is to get this to you. And by the way, let me just make sure I saw the right person. Hey, your name is Mike, right? Mike Timms, is that correct? And I have your address at 1525 Airway Boulevard. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And I have your age here. It says you're 67. And then it says Martha here is 68. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, my job simply is to get you this information. It only takes about 15, 20 minutes. They have me coming out in your area Wednesday or uh, Friday between 5 and 6 or sun, uh, Saturday between 11 and 1. Which day is better for you? Uh, I already told you I'm not interested. I don't want this information. Oh, that's awesome. Then it'll be really a quick appointment. Again, it's only going to take about 15, 20 minutes. I'll share this information with you. They have me coming out to your area, right? That's the ultimate inane. And we got people that just, they'll book the appointment. Now you might not think that people are going to book an appointment, but keeping them on the phone and they ignore it, totally ignore it. That's a Paul Minichino. That's a Paul Minichino approach, okay? So that's one way to handle objections. Here's another way. It, 
and I, I kind of did a little bit of it, is that the the other part of answering objections is never hesitate. You hesitate, you die, right? You put a gap in there, like someone says, well, you know, we're um, we already took care of that. Pause. That they're going to kill you, man. They're going to eat you up. So you got to fill that gap with something. You cannot. You cannot leave a gap. So the game is: How can I not leave a gap? Well, you don't leave a gap by repeating what they said. Okay. So they, they say, "No, we already took care of it." Oh, you took care of it. Okay. That gives gives you time to kind of think, right? You took care of it, and you know it's a question. Remember, when you are asking questions. You're in control. Let's say, yeah, yeah, we took care of it. Oh, that's interesting. How long ago did you take care of it? Dude, you're asking them questions. Well, some agent came over about a month ago. Oh, wow. They came over a month ago? Yeah, they came over a month ago and we already took care of it. So we really don't need it anymore. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just curious. Can I ask you a question? See, Every question leads you to an answer or they hang up, but I'm not going to, you know, give up until they hang up on me. I'm going to keep them on the line as long as possible. So the game is how long can you keep them on the line when you're asking questions and if they keep answering. That's awesome. Like, have you, I'm curious, Mike, have you watched my uh, dialing old leads video? I have, and and it's funny you ask that. I was watching that, and I watched an old video from Terry Edwards, and I I can definitely tell you that that acknowledging, ignoring, and then continuing on does work. I booked an appointment like that, so <laughs> I know that does work. But it's funny what you you answered what I why I was really asking. I've had several leads over the past two weeks. I do exactly that, try to keep them on, and they've hung up on me. And I usually call them back and say, hey, I don't know what happened, but we got disconnected. <laughs> but that doesn't work every time on some of them. So yeah, because they're not going to pick one's... up the phone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, yeah, absolutely. So you did everything you could do. Like, I'm a big fan of people that if you've done everything you could do, then it's time to move on, forget that lead, move on, right? That's one thing about – um uh, what amazes me about um, golfers, for example, pro golfers, is they could like totally bogey a hole and mess up like crazy. And then they just go to the next hole and it's a brand new hole for them, right? They never let anything that they experienced in the past ever affect their future, you know? Now, look, their swing could be off and it affects every shot. They mentally, they just, you know, they shut it down. It's like a, a good pro defensive back. They get burned on one play, guy scores a touchdown. They just have to shake it off and you know the next play is the next play. Here in in our business, when it comes to answering objections, here's what's crazy is people what mentally you think that you know you're not converting um or you're not um yeah you're not converting the leads into appointments. And you you just think oh my every time you call then it's like oh my God what am I going to get? Oh my gosh, here, here it comes again. I'm not interested. And you start thinking that before you even call them. And here's what happens mentally is if you got the objective in your mind, what happens, and it's a weird thing, but I promise you, you project it into them. This mental thing happens where you project your fear into them. It's kind of like how an animal knows you're or you're scared of them. They can smell it. Likewise, clients can smell your fear of a that objection, you know, a mile away because you have it in your head already. You can't have that in your head because you come in calling every dial thinking that you're going to get the not interested. Um, we took care of it already. You're, I promise you, everyone, you're going to get that every time. You got to clear your head and then have the expectation that I'm going to book this next one. And it's a mental exercise. I'm going to book this next one. I'm going to book this next one. Even if you don't, you have to go into every appointment, every call, like I'm going to book this one. I'm fired up. You got to speak it 
into existence. So you cleanse your mind from negative, a negative mindset that creeps into your call. I promise you it creeps into your call. It's like, um, so there was a time where I played tennis seven days a week. I'm really into tennis. Um, this is like in my mid twenties to early thirties. Um, I was had like a 3.5 ranking on USTA. So I was pretty decent, you know, and played some team tennis too. But I, play, I was playing seven days a week. Um, I would play in the mornings and then I would play the, in the weekends. And one thing I noticed about me is that if I have a, like I have a bad temper and my temper would get the best of me where I know I could beat this person, but I was totally beating myself. And it just kept spiraling down to this. Like I would just, you know, hit the ball. And I knew sometimes I'd, I'd hit a winner and sometimes it'd go like, you know, uh, you know, hundred miles an hour the other way. Right. I mean, I was just, I couldn't hand, couldn't take it. Then the other matches where I just kept positive. And it's like, no matter if I hit a bad shot, it's like, all right, man, you got this. You got this guy, man. I kick butt, right? It's amazing how mentally your mental attitude can just override anything positive or negative. And I know that for sports. And those of you who play sports, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You have to have this mental um, disposition to go after it. And it has to be positive because anything negative will turn out negative. Your performance, it'll negatively impact your performance. So your attitude, when you pick up the phone, it's got to be a positive one that you're going to book this next one. You're going to book this next one. I don't care if you didn't book anything. At least you had the proper attitude that next time it's going to work for you. And anyone that's done that has come out on the positive end of it. Well, Alex, you know, I'll, I'll get positive when I start getting results. It's like, come on, dude. That's like asking a fireplace for fire before you put wood in it. Right? People have this expectation. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just tell straight up. You freaking if you don't think you gotta pay the price I paid, you know, then you shouldn't be in this business. Like, how dare you? Like, I'll start getting mad here. Okay, so let me prepare you. I'm about to lose my temper. How dare you think that you're gonna have any less no-shows and any less crap on the phone than I did when I got started? How dare you think that? You got to pay your price, baby. It's worth it. But you got to pay the price like I did, like Megan Wood did, like Mike and Noel Levantovich did. Look, I was there when they got started. I brought them in the business. We all were had bad days and we all had great days, but we never all had a bad day at the same time. Right? We encouraged each other. Okay? But you know what? We weren't that good when we got started. We got better and better quickly. Okay. We paid a price. We paid, you know, to build the kind of business we have, we've made eight figures so far of income in this business. We paid a dadgum price all the way through, and we still are paying a price now. And, and to me, it's like, how dare you think you can be successful without paying the price? How dare you think that? Does that make sense? Like, Everyone's going to pay a different price, but it's like going up to a Coke machine and you put in 99 cents, but it costs a dollar to get a Coke out. And you're putting 99 cents and you're like mad and you're kicking the machine. It's like, bro, I, I don't know what to tell you. You got to put every single, you got to put one more penny in, right? And that's another objection. No, one more penny, one more penny. You earn your ability to make income in the business by paying the price you have to pay, by going through all the crap you got to go through for no-shows and chargebacks and people, you know, cussing you out on the phone, right? We've all been through it. We just happen to hang in there longer than you. We've been through the road ahead of you. We're just telling you, hey, it's worth it. Just keep going. You're going through what we went through, right? You know? By the way, the kind of money we make in this thing, it's not designed to be easy. Look, here's the thing I always say all the time. If it were freaking easy, then we'd be making minimum wage. Then everyone could do it, right? Everyone could do it. 
And then we wouldn't be making any money. The beautiful thing about sales, particularly in life insurance sales, is only the strong survive, the strong mentally. I don't care how bad your skill level is, your skill level, you can learn. Anyone can learn a skill. Like, I don't know how to drive a forklift, but I know that if I spend enough time with Shay, I could be an expert forklift driver like her because she's going to show me what to do. Look, gang, there's no secret in sales. Sales is a tech technique. Sales is an attitude. Sales is work. And anyone can learn the skill of sales, okay? But not many people can handle the mental part, right? Like, think about it. How many golfers are consistently winning golf tournaments week after week after week? You might think you see golfers. They don't. Like, if you if you are on the PGA Tour and you win, like, three or four events, dude, you are in the elite, right? But one, you know, one tournament, Rory McIlroy finishes number two. Next tournament, he doesn't make the cut, right? And these are the top professionals in the world. And it's up here. When you get to that elite level, it's up in your head, right? But because he didn't make the cut one term, do you think he quits? No, because he knows over time he's going to come back. He's just going to keep working on his skill, make enough tweaks, and then he's going to come back and do it again. And then he's going to make money. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, look, I didn't, didn't mean for this to be, you know, in your face, but seriously, Fall in love with the process of learning how to do this. And it's not fun. It's not easy. But the victories are there if you're willing to hang in there long enough, right? And I, and I know, look, sometimes you could feel like defeated. That's all part of this. I felt that way before, right? And I was, and at the time, I was like making a ton of money. I, I, you could still feel defeated even if you're making a lot of money. See, that's one. That's a fallacy. People think, well, Alex, if I were making your money, man, I would not have a bad day. It's like, seriously, dude, do you know what kind of problems I have to deal with? Boo hoo, Alex. You know, I know. Feel sorry for me. But I deal with stuff. I deal with much crap. I'm okay with it, but that's why we get paid what we get paid. In other words, I, I know this is stream of consciousness, but the reason why I make the kind of money I make, I know I'm doing the pointing thing. I hate, I hate that. I'm going to stop pointing. The reason why I make the money I make is because I, I can handle way more negative than you can. Way more. Do you understand that? Every time, the only way you're going to make more money is if you know how to deal with negative. The level of your income will rise to your ability to handle the negative. And if you want to cap at 50000 a year or 75000 a year, then just you know, never learn how to handle more negative than what you're already dealing with now. I don't know if that makes sense. It's one of those weird things because you don't know until you get on the other side of it. And you don't know until you're making the kind of money I'm making and then the negative that I have to deal with, right? Bless you. I know I kind of went off a little bit. Bless you. Wow. <laughs> That's my wife. She's sneezing. It's our anniversary today. Happy anniversary, sweetie. Okay. What was it 32 years? Wow. See, we made a decision that we're going to celebrate on Saturday. Well, Alex, you're not going to. Yeah, we did. Saturday? Okay. Well, anyway. Alex, you mean you're not celebrating it on the exact day? It's like, come on, man. Like, I have people like they say they don't want to come to family reunion because it's my daughter's first birthday that weekend. And we, I have to, I can't go on that. I can't go to family reunion. It's like, oh my God. So you're going to let your children determine your financial future. There we go. I'm pointing again. You're going to let your children determine your financial future, huh? You're going to let a one-year-old determine how much money you're going to make. Gee, that's real smart. It's like your one-year-old doesn't know what day her birthday is. Would it be okay if you celebrated the week before, the week after? Do you think she would enjoy it as much? It's like amazing. Some of these excuses people make for not trying to further their financial future. You know, it's like we love being married. Hey, okay? been married 32 years. <laughs> you, I know you do. 
I love you too. And we can celebrate our anniversary on another day because, hey, I got to do this. I'm doing this call with you. I want to be with you. I want to help you. And she understands that. She's totally on board with it, right? It's like, man, don't let, don't counsel, don't take advice from people that aren't making the kind of money you want to make. Don't take, don't let your kids determine what you need to do to make money and provide for your family. Don't let your, you know, the committee of they, your family, they want you to come to some event, but you've got another, you got to see Andy Albright tomorrow at Indianapolis from noon to three o'clock like me. Well, I have to go to this family event. Oh, okay. Let me ask you, when you can't pay your bills, are you are they going to pay your bills because you decided not to go and improve yourself? <laughs> anyway, Mike, see what you did? Are you asking that one simple question? Jeez, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, man, I love it. Keep it going. This is this is what I needed to hear. <laughs> well, look, one thing is is when you're doing this business, understand this, is that you're learning from everything you're doing, everything you're doing. I told someone this today that you can't quit because the experience you're learning from every single dial, every single answering objections, every single appointment you're going on, you're banking that experience. You are earning your experience so that you can turn the corner and finally get it and things will start to click, right? But but all that experience gathering will not mean a thing if you quit. It's kind of like someone who goes to college and all they have to do is finish one more class to get their degree. But they go through their entire senior year except for that class and decide not to do that class and they quit. It's like, dude, you are only one class away from getting your degree. And so all that money and all those courses, their freshman, junior, their freshman, sophomore, junior year, senior year, and they fall short by one class. They might as well not have started, right? That's like this. You're going through your freshman year right now. Like if you quit, you're, not, you're never going to get your degree. You have to go through your freshman year, which is trying to figure this thing. Your freshman year in this business gang is you're just trying to figure yourself out in the context of this business and how bad you want it. You know, your first year is, is this worth it? You're going to ask your question, is this worth it? And everything around you says it is because you got people successful. So it is worth it. The second, the sophomore year is for you figuring out, can I do this too? Can I do this? And when you figure out, yeah, I could do this, because you start getting some wins. Your junior year is you're getting it down, man. You're starting to get your ratios. You start knowing an investment in leads is going to turn into this much business. You really kind of know that. Okay. You know what your senior year is? Your senior year is trusting that everything that you learned your junior year, that if you doubled your investment in, in yourself and in your leads, that you will get more than double out of it. Okay, and I've taught this bunch of videos. There's that's where you cross over into the big leads. You know, it's usually fear that prevents you. It's usually you're yeah, you're doing great putting 400 bucks a week in your lead lead investment, 400 bucks a week. But then when you when someone tells you, you know what happens if you double your lead investment, you probably will get more than twice the the make more than twice the money you were making with half that lead investment. No way. Yes. Why there? And there's a lot of reasons for that. I'm not going to spend time going into it, but it, it just takes a guts. It takes intestinal fortitude. It takes cojones to double your investment in yourself and trust that your ratios are your ratios. That's what cracks me up from people that are on the precipice of getting into high production mode. And I know that's not a lot of you on this call right now, but they're on the precipice of high production mode and it's fear that holds them back. They're making a decent income. They're making 90, 
thousand a year. They might bump up a hundred thousand, right? And they just are fearful that if they double their lead investment, that they're not going to get their their investment out of it. I'm going, dude, you know, you know that you're you're already investing eight hundred bucks leak eight hundred bucks in leads. It's just taking you two weeks to invest. Well, what do you mean? Well, you do 400 a week, right? So two weeks is 800. So you're already investing 800 bucks. You're just doing it in two weeks. Do you ever think about pushing that into one week and what would happen? And it just takes faith. And if you talk to any top producer, there was that pivotal moment when they made that decision. It's really cool. You talk to any of them, there's a point. They'll tell you when that was. Most of them will be able to tell you when that was. <laughs> anyway, any other questions? This turned into an attitude and a mindset call. <laughs> hey, uh, Alex. Calvin. You pretty much answered my question. And... Um, because uh, I think that a day or two ago, I had an infection. I was, um, these are what you call the, the, the Pakistani leads. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I, after I said to him, um, I said, looks like, you know, you got to call about the low cost program. It pays your final expenses. So, and you, you agreed to be contacted by a licensed agent. Just need to confirm your age, your beneficiary, and the plan you want. So I confirmed all three, and he goes, "Okay, how much does it cost? How much does it cost?" And it just, and then he said, and I just kind of stalled. <laughs> so and then he I said, "Look, you had enough time. You, have, you hung up the phone." So, but anyway, so it's it's part of the learning curve. Yeah, you know, and here's. It's it's funny how people are. It's like, well, I guess you weren't serious. And what I mean by that is, do you know that clients that actually let you help them that are serious about taking care of their families, they don't act like that, right? They don't act like that, you know? So um, the, the person that will tell me what the price is, I go, well, you want to know the price. And the only way I can tell you the price is if you let me know what your health is. And so here's a great, co actually, it's not, now it's come back to me. Those, the answer to that one is like, Joe, I can tell you a price right now, but don't you want an accurate price according to your health? Or do you want me just to BS you and do a bait and switch? Like I can do a bait and switch on you all day long, but I don't like to do it because it's unethical. But is that what you want? Or do you want me to quote you a real rate? Like I go to guns, man. It's like, shut up already. I'm so sick of hearing that. this is in my head. Like, dude, how can I do my job? But you won't let me do my job. Right. And so again, how I go over that is I say, um, well, I know you want a quote, but do you want a real quote that's accurate? Or you want a bait and switch quote where I can quote you the lowest, not knowing anything about your health. And then you're going to say, oh, that's a great price. When in fact, you won't be able to qualify for that. So do you want the bait and switch quote, quote or do you want a real quote that's accurate to your health? And I just shut the heck up. And the first person that speaks loses. So I just wait. And I just wait, and I just wait, and I just wait. Because when you answer, when you ask him a question like that, he sounds like a total fool, doesn't he? Well, I want the bait and switch quote. You know, and by the way, that's a, it's a really good technique. So let's go back into technique, slide back into the technique thing. So this is the uh, method of answering objections, the AB question, um, the optometrist method. I call it the optometrist method because... You you give them a choice. Like if you've ever been to the optometrist, which I know you have because you wear glasses, right, Calvin? I do too. 
And they still use that old school method, even though they can actually put the laser thing in your, whatever the thing in their eye, they know exactly what your power is, but they also do the, does A look better or B? You know, then they slide, I think it's the astigmatism thing. Then they do the click, click. Okay, now is it B or C? Which one's better? And they get to the point where, oh man, I, that's, they're both really close. Okay, and then they note that. I have no idea what they're writing down, but they're like dialing it in, right? And so answering objections, you could do the, the optometrist handling objections mode. So that is, you give the client choice of one of two choices, okay? So let's apply it, like we just applied it to the person that said they want to quote, want to quote, want to quote. Let's go do it to the I'm not interested, okay? So the, the, the optometrist method of objection handling for I'm not interested is, oh, you're not interested? <laughs> you know, you repeat what they said. No, not interested. Oh, okay. Well, I'm kind of confused. When you fill this form out, when most people fill this form out, they're looking for final expense information on how to cover their death. When most people fill this form out, they were concerned that leaving, they wanted to leave their family with enough money to bury them when they died. Now, is that what you were looking for? Or were you looking for something completely different? Okay. <laughs> that is so slick because it's the optometrist. They have to either answer, well, yeah, that's what I was looking for. Or the answer, well, no, I was looking for something completely different. You didn't give them a third answer, which is I'm not interested. Or were you not really interested, right? Do you see what you did? You took you you took the answer off the choice. <laughs> they gave you the answer. That's not the answer you that they should choose. So you give them two other choices. So let me do that again. Oh, you're not interested? Well, well, let me ask you a question. When you fill this form out, the reason why most people fill this form out is they're looking to leave money for their family to bury them and take care of their final expenses. They didn't want to have them have to raise money. Now, is that what you were looking for? Or were you looking for something completely different? Okay. <laughs> I love that. And then they can say, no, no, I'm just, what are they going to say, right? They can still, you know, hang up. Okay. Well, hanging up tells me everything I need to know. Like, I don't need to continue to talk to this person, right? Because I don't want to waste my time with people that don't want to talk to me. Huh. What a concept. Yes. You are trying to find nice people that want to talk to you. When they hang up, obviously they don't want to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk to people that don't want to talk to me. That's a very one-sided conversation. You know, why call them? If I want to do that, I just wouldn't call people and I would have pretend conversations with every lead. Okay. <laughs> I know that's kind of preposterous. So, so that's how you would do the optometrist on the, and then you get them answering more questions. Well, no, I was we were I was interested in, you know, make sure I found taken care of. Okay, well, look, that's my job. I'm going to give you the information. So tell me what changed. Are you is this like? Then I go to who their beneficiary is. Always go to that. Well, tell me who's the loved one that would have to pick up the pieces when you die. Oh, your wife, Mary. Oh, okay. Wow. How long have you guys been married? See. <laughs> See what I'm doing? I love this business because you start going into their lives. Like, how long have you been? Oh, we've been married 10 years. Wow. 10 years. That's a long time. Uh, Do you guys have children? Yeah, we had three kids. Oh, that's cool. How old are they? Look, if they keep answering your questions, dude, you are walking down the road of booking an appointment, right? Because they're starting to like you because you're really interested. I'm genuinely interested in people. So I answer, ask the question because I really want to, oh, so you have three kids, 10 years. I mean, I can go off on the 10. Well, that's a long time. What's your secret to staying married that long? You know, I kind of laugh, you know, what's your secret? Well, I just made it a point never to argue with my, never argue with my wife. You do that too? Oh, I do that too. It works, doesn't it? Yeah, it works. Happy wife, happy life. We start bantering, dude. You see how that, does that make sense? But when you get to the beneficiary, you get to the heart of why, who they love. 
And who doesn't want to take care of the person they love? See, every objection goes back to who they care about. Look, if they don't care about their spouse, guess what? I'm hanging up on them. If they don't have anyone they love, I'm hanging up on them. I'm not going to spend another minute with someone who doesn't love their family. My job is not to make friends with people. My job is to make friends with people that love their families. I'm going to take care of them. That's my job. I, I hope you're you're not thinking that your job is to make friends with everyone you talk to, right? Because someone who doesn't love their family enough to take care of them with the insurance doesn't need to be my friend. You know what I'm saying? Because when my friends that buy insurance for me, they they go on my Christmas card list. Okay. Anyway, so that's how you handle the objection, the optometrist objection on the, you know, the not interested. So here's the one we took care of it already. Well, actually, took care of it already. Oh. You took care of it already? <laughs> I love doing that. Oh, okay. Well, let me ask you a question. When most people fill this form out, they're looking to make sure that there's, they're making, they want to make sure that they get the best product for the best price for their families. Now, is that what you were looking for? Or were you looking for something completely different? No, no that's what we were looking for. Okay. Well, my job is to give you an alternative so that you can see whether or not you have the best product. Because until you compare it to another you know, company, another quote, another features and benefits of this policy, you don't know that you have the best policy. Look, it only takes 15, 20 minutes. I, I, they have me coming over in your area you know, tomorrow between 5 and 7 p.m. or Saturday between um, 1 and 3 p.m. Which day works better for you? You see, I don't like... I don't have to stay on it a lot, right? So that's how you handle, yeah. And then I can go into all those other things like who's going to have to pick up the pieces, blah, 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 right? But, you know, so it is, so let me repeat it. Well, we took care of it already. Oh, okay, you took care of it already? Well, let me ask a question. When most people fill this form out, they're looking for the best product for the best price. So you you took care of it already? Well. How would you know if you got the best product, best price without, you know, an honest comparison against another bunch of, you know, another set of companies? We've got 49. And look, it only takes 15, 20 minutes. We can take a look at what you have. I'll see what we have. And then at the end of our conversation, 15, 20 minutes later, you'll know which product, you'll know if you've got the best product for you and your family. You know, isn't it worth knowing that? So that's the optometrist objection handling on, um, you know, we took care of it already, right? Um, what's another one? Well, I don't have a lot of time right now. Oh man, neither do I. Let me ask you a question. When you fill this out, you know, when you took the time to fill this out, most people, when they fill this out, they're looking to protect their families um, with enough money to bury them and take care of without them having to do a GoFundMe page. Um, when you fill this out, was that what you were looking for? Or are you looking for something completely different? Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Make sure my family's taken care of. Okay, great. Well, listen, and who's who's going to be the person that you love that would you have to pick up the pieces after you're gone? Oh, your wife, Mary? Okay, cool. Hey, listen, that's only going to take about 15, 20 minutes. We can make sure Mary and your children are taken care of. And, you know, I'll be in and out. Boom. Um, they have me coming out to your area, blah, blah, blah. Do you see? You totally diffuse it. Everyone's Everyone is busy. I'm busy. You're busy. They're busy. We're all busy. You know, but I want to get back to why they filled it out. What were you trying to take care of? Listen, I'll help you take care of marrying the kids. It'll only take about 15, 20 minutes. But Alex, it takes more than that. It takes more of that. They want me to stay there. 15, 20 minutes to see if we can do something for them. And then it takes another half hour to 45 to fill out the form. Guess what? If they really want it, they're going to stay there with me to fill out the electronic applications, right? <laughs> it's so easy, man. 